Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another player ratings update video for you guys for Madden 22. Today, they released the running backs and the tight ends, some of the more interesting positions. I also have a couple of other things. I didn't do defensive linemen yesterday, which I, I wasn't aware came out before I put my video out. So I'm going to go over that real quick. And I'm also going to go over top five wide receivers from the rookies, which I also found. Uh, which I'm going to go over all in this video. So, as always, if you guys want me to keep doing this, uh, you know, line of videos, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section because there's still two more days worth of drops. Let me know in the comments, as always, what you guys think about these lists, who you think uh, should have made it, or, you know, what rating you think should be different. Oh, that's going to get right into the video. You know, like I said, I didn't do defensive linemen yesterday, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, starting off with, uh, you know, the top guy, Aaron Donald, another 99 overall year for him. Another member of the 99 Club. I'm going to have two 99 Club guys today because he was the one yesterday that I didn't report. So I'm also going to have one from the tight end group, uh, which you can probably already guess who that's going to be. Um, the second overall defensive tackle, and this is pretty much something that he's had for a while now, is, is Fletcher Cox from the Eagles. Uh, I don't know if he's really the second best guy anymore, but he keeps getting that rating. It's kind of an honorary thing for him at this point. Uh, then Chris Jones uh, for the Chiefs comes in with a 92. Then you have DeForest Buckner. Uh, from the Colts coming in at 92, uh, Cameron Hayward at 92, Michael Pierce at 91, Calais Campbell at 90, Kenny Clark at 89, Stephen Tua at 89, and Vita Veo at 88. I don't really have too strong of a reaction from any of the guys on this list. Um, I still feel like Fletcher Cox, uh, maybe he's come down to earth a little bit to the point where he, he probably could still be the second highest rate defensive tackle, but I just don't know if he's two points ahead of Chris Jones, um, who's probably a better pass rusher at this point. Uh, and DeForest Buckner. I think he's kind of more in that realm, but um, no real complaints here. Let's go and let's move on to the uh, skill position players because that's really what everybody cares about. Those are the guys that make you choose a team, you know, guys like running backs, uh, which I'll save for last. I did want to go over, I did come across a few more rookie receiver ratings uh, that weren't previously announced uh, because they weren't part of the top 10 rookies. Uh, Mac Jones, I never really uh, talked about, although he's a 71 overall quarterback for the Patriots. I'm not a really a big fan of his. His throw power is also released. It was an 85. That, to me, kind of makes him not even worth um, looking at because throw power is lack of speed. I mean, he's a guy, if, if you can trade Mac Jones in a CFM right away, I would do it. Uh, then also Elijah Moore's overall was announced for the Jets, 73 overall. Kadarius Tony's overall was announced for the Giants, wide receiver, 72 overall. And Rashad Bateman is also a 72 overall receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Then I'm going to go, like I said, we're going to go straight to the, uh, the fun positions. Uh, I'll start off with tight ends and then we'll come back to uh, running backs. As far as tight ends go, we have another 99 overall for the 99 club. Uh, shouldn't surprise anybody he was a 99 overall at the end of Madden 21. It's Travis Kelsey. Now, this is a guy that, you know, he, he's... I don't really consider him a tight end. I mean, he lines up as a receiver most of the game uh, in real life anyway. So, uh, but these a lot of these are just by honorary title. George Kittle coming off of an injury plague season. I don't think he played very much. He dropped to a 96. In my opinion, as far as the actual tight end goes, when you include blocking uh, as well as receiving, I think George Kittle is the best tight end in the league for my money. And most of that's because, like I said, Travis Kelsey just doesn't, he just feels like a really big receiver. He, he lines up everywhere. It's really hard. He's not in the traditional tight end category like a guy like George Kittle might be. Then Darren Waller coming in at number three. I remember years ago when I played CFM, Darren Waller, nobody knew about Darren Waller. He was one of my favorite players because he was a, he was a really low overall rated player, but he was really fast. Now he's coming to a, you know the NFL and become a really a good player in real life. So good for him. Uh, number four, Mark Andrews at an 88. Uh, number five, Hunter Henry, the new uh, you know tight end for the New England Patriots. That's obviously a huge upgrade for their offense. Number six, Austin Hooper. Number seven, Rob Gronkowski. Number, uh, number eight, Mike Gusecki. Uh, people forget, by the way, I go right over Rob Gronkowski. People forget that last year when Madden 21 came out and Rob Gronkowski came out of retirement, he immediately became a 95 overall player. And people were just slaying EA for that. Uh, I bring that up because I don't think he should even be on this list. But it's a huge drop from what they started him at. Uh, and considering he had a pretty solid year for the most part, and he won a Super Bowl and played a big part in that win with two touchdowns in that game. Um, it's interesting to see them kind of own their mistake 
and drop him. I don't think they dropped him far enough, though, to be honest with you. I mean, I would take, in real life, I'd probably take every tight end on this list over Rob Gronkowski, including Mike Gusecki at number eight, um, even though he's he hasn't fully realized his potential as a receiver. He's still, in my opinion, a much bigger weapon than Rob Gronkowski. TJ Hawkinson, a lot of people think he should have been rated higher, and I agree. I think he might be. Uh, I'd have him probably ahead of Austin Hooper at this point. Austin Hooper, I don't really know. He didn't do a ton in Cleveland last year. That was kind of a, a, a signing. That, I mean, they gave him, like, top tight end money, and he really didn't earn it as far as I remember. Um, going off the top of my head, I don't think he had too great of a year. And then number 10, Dallas Goddard uh, of the Eagles. Now, th- that's that brings up another point for me. I can't believe that Zach Ertz, who for years was a 90-plus overall tight end, easily considered the third-best tight end uh, in the in the first tight end category with Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. Had a bad year last year, was injured a lot, and for some reason dropped so far that he's not even on here. I think that's a bit of a fail. I, if I were to replace anybody, like I said, I know Rob Gronkowski is a big name, uh, but he's just, I mean, his speed at the end of Madden last year was like a 70. Uh, so it's like, even if he is an 86 overall player, to me, he's just a blocking tight end. He's just still a really good blocker in, in the same vein as like a George Kittle when it comes to blocking. Um, but ultimately, I, I just don't, I still don't think that he's an 86 overall rated player. I think that he probably, uh, I'd probably have him like a, a, like a little bit of above 80 maybe because of his blocking. His receiving skills are still kind of there, but he's so slow. Um, so to me, I would probably have Zach Ertz still on this list, and I would drop Gronkowski off completely. I think Zach Ertz probably deserves that same type of because um, he's had such a great career. He probably deserves that same type of um, you know respect that Rob Gronkowski is getting. Where even if he's not necessarily you know you don't know what you're going to get going into the year, I still think he should be rated high enough that he should be on this list. So let's go. Let's move on to the running backs. Starting off at number one, we got Christian McCaffrey, who once again started off last year as a 9-9 overall player. Probably is still a 9-9 overall player, but because of being injured, you never know he's going to be coming into this season. He had a major injury, missed most of the year, so they dropped him two points to a 97. Derrick Henry, this one kind of disappoints me the most. Derrick Henry's coming off of a 2,000-yard season. He's been the most dominant running back in the league. He, his entire team has formed their identity around Derrick Henry, and he's still not even the highest rated running back. He's still only in 96. Now, I know that catching the ball and stuff like that's important, but when it comes to running back, since running is in the name, I really think that Derrick Henry should be a 99. Coming off of a 2,000-yard season and primed to do it again, um, he's just a force. He's an absolute force in the NFL. He's one of the top five players, in my opinion, in the NFL. I don't care regardless of position, especially when it comes to importance. I don't know how Derrick Henry isn't pushing, after last season, isn't pushing a 99 or at least a 98. He should be the number one rated running back, in my opinion. Especially with Chris McCaffrey coming off an injury, you don't know what you're going to get out of him because of how serious that injury is or how well his body is going to recover from that. That's always a huge question mark. So Derrick Henry not being the number one running back to me is unforgivable. And then on top of that, Nick Chubb being the same rating as him. Just think about it. Nick, Nick Chubb is a great player. I love Nick Chubb. He's an amazing player. They're both very similar in style, too, as far as like bruising, pounding, big physical running backs. Does anybody in their right mind really think that Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry are on the same level? Like, seriously, ask yourself that. Nobody in their right mind thinks that they're on the same level. There's Derrick Henry, and then there's everybody else in this league. Because we're in a passing league right now, with the exception of the Tennessee Titans, because Derrick Henry is that good, that they basically has formed their offensive identity around him the same way the Cowboys used to around Zeke Elliott before he kind of became broken down. Uh, we'll get to that point in the list. But to me, there's no there's no rhyme or reason to say that Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb are tied. Maybe Nick Chubb is a slightly better receiver. Maybe that's why. But to me, this is probably one of the biggest fails that Madden has put out. And I don't know, maybe it's me just being a very big Derrick Henry fan, but that guy is just, he's just that amazing. I don't understand how anybody could miss that. This guy should be, uh, if not a 99, like I say, he should be the number one rated back. There's no question about it in my mind, especially considering Chris McCaffrey coming off the injury like he was. There's no reason they couldn't have gave Henry that little extra boost um, and just, just made him a 97. And I don't even have a problem if he would have been tied with Chris McCaffrey, but he should have been number one. I also have a problem with Nick Chubb being number three. Three. Like I said, once again, full disclosure, I love Nick Chubb. I think he's an amazing player. But I still think that Alvin Kamara, coming off of the amazing season he had last year, his receiving ability is probably as good as it gets on this list. 
Um, I think that he probably should have been the number three back. They only have him as a 94 here. At the end of Madden 21, he was a 97. So I don't know what happened between the end of last season and the beginning of Madden 22 that made them just basically underrate every major player for the Saints, including uh, Michael Thomas, who finished, who started last year, I think, as a 99, and finished th started this upcoming Madden season as a 94. So it's it's apparent that they're just not, you know, they're, 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 all the ratings of all the Saints players are going to go down because Drew Brees isn't there. Is, is that a fair assessment? And now that Jameis Winston is there, I guess they're just expecting the entire team to fade, and they're giving that in the ratings. Now, I skipped over Dalvin Cook. i got no problem with Dalvin Cook's rating at a 94. He's an amazing player. Aaron Jones at a 91 uh, is a pretty solid. I think it's a jump. I think he was in the eight, the high 80s last year. Uh, Saquon Barkley coming off of another major injury is only a 90. Um, I'm going to say it's because of the injury. As far as a player is concerned, I'd probably have him uh, after Kamara. Um, at maybe like a 92 or a 93, but because of the injuries, you know, they don't know what he is anymore, I guess, or they don't know what to expect. I hear he's having problems even getting ready uh, for the season. I think that the the there's some concerns there from uh, from the Giants as if he's going to be ready for the year, uh, coming off of a, an injury that really I think was early last season um, for them. So that's that's a situation to keep an eye on in real life. Then you have J uh, Josh Jacobs, who has been very consistent since he's come to the league at 88 overall. Ezekiel Elliott, I feel like he is getting a Cowboys rating boost bump at an 88 overall because people forget Ezekiel Elliott went from being probably the most heavily used and one of the most productive running backs in the league to last year. He didn't even break 1,000 yards. Like, how do you make the top 10 running backs list and not break 1,000 yards? I mean, Joe Mixon uh, also tied for 88. Uh, I mean, all these guys, there's, been, there's definitely, he's, if I were to take a guy off this list, I would probably take Ezekiel Elliott off this list entirely. I mean, I, I kind of look at him the same way as, as Zach Ertz in the tight ends list. Zach Ertz had a really bad year last year, and he just, just disappeared off the map. I think that Ezekiel Elliott is probably in that same boat. He could easily bounce back this year, but to start the season, I feel like he should be a, a mid to low 80s type player. So I'm going to go to the end of the video there. Like I said, as always, if you guys want me to keep up with this for the next two days and also, you know, coming all the way up to man, which I probably will anyway, but if you want to hook me up with a like and a uh, comment, that stuff really helps out my videos. So I would appreciate that also. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.